Model steam engines, top tip time, part 22. And as usual, this episode is jam-packed with useful information. The video clips are taken from a series all about renovating a Bassett Loke steam plant with an S50 steam engine. This time, I'm working on the boiler. Unfortunately though, the owner of the steam plant got there before me. He drilled out the mounting points for the water gauge. If you look at the boiler in this clip, you can see the bottom hole and how large it is. What you can't see in this clip is the large hole drilled a bit higher up, which is in the wrong place. This episode starts by modifying the holes in the back head and rectifying a previous error. And now sit back and relax and let the show begin. What I'm going to do in this episode is fit the water gauge and make a special fitting because the one that's already there that's been made for it is not right. Before doing that though, this has been bothering me since I first saw the boiler. These holes have been drilled in the wrong place. The original holes have been plugged and as you could clearly see in the last clip, the small holes have been drilled to the left of the plugs. So using my small Proxon motor tool with a 1 16th of an inch drill, I'm persuading the hole to be in the right place. I've been very careful not to break off the drill because that would not be good in a back head like this. But I'm tightly controlling the drill so it can't wander about and the hole goes right down the middle of the original plugged hole. And so, flush with success, I'm going to try the other hole. And I'm pulling this in the opposite direction. And in no time at all, I have two holes in the correct place. I need to tap these holes for a 7BA bolt. And the first step is to use a 2mm drill bit, which is the tapping size for 7BA. And how do I know all this? Well, it's on a chart on the wall of the workshop. If you haven't got a correct size tapping chart for different threads, it's a good idea to get one. You can get the information from a book or via an online source. When I look, it says use a number drill 46 or a 2.05mm drill, but I think a 2mm drill will suffice. You may notice I've been using my thumb as a guide for the tap, and there's nothing wrong with that because it does help to hold the tap at 90 degrees to the work. I need to make a fitting for the pressure gauge to bolt onto the boiler at this point. Inside this boiler, there's definitely something rattling as you can hear. I took the safety valve out and shook the boiler, but no, it didn't come out. So what is inside the boiler? It's a piece of steel. I'm not unduly worried about this because it will sit in the bottom of the boiler and it will eventually corrode away to nothing. I could dissolve it using some alum, but I don't think I'll bother, it will be okay. I'm cleaning up the boiler back head and removing the paint in the normal way. I sat it upright for a while in a small tub with some cellulose thinners in it. Cellulose thinners is called lacquer thinner apparently in the USA. It smells really bad and it's apparently very bad for your health. Which reminds me of someone I used to know. Anyway, that's enough of that. I first of all used some coarse sandpaper, followed by some wet or dry sandpaper to clean up the back head. I'm never going to get it fully shiny because it's very badly scratched, but that is okay. It is, after all, very much a vintage steam plant. The first job is to fit a plug in the very centre of the boiler. This hole was drilled, I think, by mistake because it's not high enough for the water gauge. The water gauge is designed to screw into the uppermost hole, the smaller one. So I'm blanking this off with a blanking plug. And I found this rather attractive squared blanking plug, which once it's in place and tightened to the right angle, looks good. I'm going to fit a three cock water gauge. This is the bottom fitting that's screwed into a bush. I suppose I could drill out the top hole and thread that massively oversized and fit a similar bush, but I don't want to do that. I want to put this back so it looks authentic. Now it's over to my small Boxford lathe, and I'm going to make a much more subtle adapter fitting. First of all, I'm reducing a piece of 3 8 brass bar down to 5 16 of an inch. Here I'm cleaning off the end part. And in no time at all, I have a piece of brass that's the right size once it's machined. The next job is to thread the end of the piece of brass using a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch die. This is a very routine job and I've showed it in a lot of videos, so you should be able to do it by now. Then the next job of course is a centre drill followed by a twist drill which is tapping size for 3 16 by 32 threads per inch. Quite unusual, I don't use this thread form very often, it's normally 3 16 by 40, but this fitting is definitely 3 16 by 32 threads per inch. 
Once I'd threaded the hole down the centre, it raised a bit of a burr, so I'm just facing off the front surface to provide a nice flat fitting for the water gauge. The next part of the job is to apply some Loctite 542 to the water gauge and screw it in place. Don't worry about the metal particles, they will move out of the way. Once I'd applied the Loctite 542 to the water gauge fitting, I held it with my Barco spanner and just rotated the chuck until it was screwed fully home into the fitting. I didn't over tighten it because I don't want to shear it off, it's just tight enough. And now it's fun time, I'm using a very thin, very long parting tool, because my normal parting tool would have fouled the water gauge as it rotated. And with the help of a shim washer, I can get it into precisely the right place with the right amount of tightness. And once again, being too heavy handed at this stage would just shear off the water gauge, so if you're doing a job like this, Take it easy, you need to be firm but gentle at the same time. As you can see from this clip, I've used a shim washer on the top fitting as well as the bottom fitting. As a test, I'm using a 4mm bolt because that's the glass size. Not a size I use very often and I don't have any, so tomorrow it's up to Blackgate's engineering to buy the right size water gauge glass. I'll try and fit that in in time for the next video because I'm very busy at work at the moment but normal service will be resumed as soon as possible. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.